got us a nice little red fox. Second one in two days. That's not a big fox. You'd be surprised at the difference between that one and the one I caught yesterday. Probably a female. I'm David with Heirs to the Outdoors. And today we're gonna be uh, showing you a remake of a coyote set. And later on, we're gonna do a, a, a fresh coyote set. All right, this is a remake we're making here. And the first thing you have to understand about our remake is you never use a fresh trap. If you use a fresh trap, you have this big area with all this scent of whatever you caught there, coyote, fox, or whatever. And you put a fresh trap there, they pick it out right away. So we're gonna clean this one up the best we can. If I can get something to do it with. I can still smell the bait from the, you know, from the previous set. The only thing that I do use fresh here is I'll use uh, peat moss. But then I take some of this smelly dirt and I uh, sift it all over it. And it doesn't seem to affect them. I've caught quite a few critters on remakes that were made with, with fresh peat moss. <laughs> See, when I do this, I just carve out a bowl that'll hold that trap tight. Whether I'm making a remake or a fresh set, I do the same thing. You want that trap to fit in there like a glove. Cut out the, the area for the levers. Look at all that stuffy pulverized down in that hole. See, the key to bedding the trap so it doesn't rock is setting it so it's holding off of the jaws and in the the spring if you have it setting on the on the base of the trap that's when you get that wobble you want it held four corners yeah that's that's pretty solid and you know no no problem whatsoever another thing i wanted to tell you people think it's all about your human scent and that's a bunch of baloney the key to this whole thing is you don't want, especially on a fresh set, you don't want bait smell on the trap at all. You want that to, to be conspicuous. I mean, he still smells you. He'll smell you there for weeks, but it dissipates enough that he can't tell that you were there, you know, or that you did anything there. it would just be like smelling any human scent. You see how solid that trap is. Mm -hmm. What I do, we're going to put... A little bit of salt or a lot of salt either one's good just make sure you put some salt we'll just reuse this pan cover because again everything here smells the same it smells like that uh, fox that was caught here yesterday that peed all over everything okay so I'm gonna try to do this without setting this trap off I may have to redo it There we go. Now that trap is set, so if something the size of a fox or a coyote steps on that, it's it's gonna it's gonna go off. Then I rebed that, and I use peat moss. Peat moss it will eventually get wet and freeze, but it'll last for quite a few rains. And the only thing that'll that'll get wet is the very top of it. Like sometimes if if it rains and then freezes. I'll have to come along and I'll just take my shovel and I'll just knock the, the top layer off as ice and then uh, just shake a little more a little more peat moss on it and now a little more salt. Now this is what you call a weatherproof trap. I mean, can they eventually freeze? Yeah, I'm sure they could after a few weeks, but this'll, this'll keep everything. And then just, then you wanna just kinda, now the last thing I'll do here 
other than bait and put my uh, hole in is I'm going to take a little bit of this smelly dirt and I'm just going to put a light layer over this so it blends in. And let me get a little more. And then especially out on the edges so the edges blend in and it don't look like a big transition from the dirt to the to the peat moss. The only stuff that was in this catch circle that has all that smell on it. We don't want to bring anything fresh. That There's a little bit of that blood. It don't matter. That won't bother them at all. I want to make a little pile here as a backing to keep them from trying to come from behind. I've had, I've had coyotes do that. The last coyote I caught had actually come a day or two before. And it was the day before, and he, not this set, but it was a different set. But he came from the back end, and I had, I had a few corn stalks. It was in another cornfield. And he came from the back end and pulled that, and dug that hole from the back side. Well, I just built a bigger pile, and the next day I came and I had him. We're about nine inches from the center of the pan. And that can't be where my other hole was exactly, because there's a root here. But it don't matter either. You want to get these holes as deep as you can. You want to give the critter something to, to work at and to dig at. The deeper that bait is buried, the, the longer you're going to keep him at that set. And if you can't get it too deep, don't worry about it. But I like to try to get him at least, you know, seven, eight, nine inches. This is hard to work in with this muck. I caught my very first coyote ever in this particular field up in that corner. With a set like this, you don't have to do any major rebaiting. This thing is so polluted with scent that, that it's unreal. I'll just pull that in a little bit. So, all I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of something called liquid mouse from night owl lures any commercial bait or lure will work i'm telling you right now don't people get hung up on oh, i use this brand or i use that brand and something might work better for you something might work better for me and that's what i would stick with but any of these lures and baits will work i like um top dog predator bait from Hoosier Trapper Outdoors and I'm not endorsed by them or I'm just telling you what I use just you know so people will get an idea and then uh, there's a lure maker Rusty Johnson he makes something a bait called Lucky and it, there's a lure that I like to use with it it's a little bit skunky but it's not like real you know like really loud like like if you actually had a skunk but it has a slight and I use those two together, and that is what I've caught most of my fox and coyotes on this year. And I, last year I used almost exclusively the top dog predator bait from Hoosier Trapper, and I caught everything on that last year. That, that's what I'm telling you. People want to get home. Well, what bait do you use? Any of them will work. You know, you just got to find the right combination and, and what works for you. And then just, I really don't have to do this but I'm just going to put a couple of drops of coyote urine to maybe make them focus there Let me get that out of the way and there you go with the amount of scent and smell that's around this area you really probably wouldn't have to put any bait just having all this fox smell here and having that hole in the ground is enough to get them to come up here and look. <clears throat> See that fox turd right there? I'm going to show you the, the use of that. Over here, I, I noticed we have a fox dropping, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to take that fox dropping right here, and I'm going to set it right there. Now, when 
any critter comes in here that first of all that will attract them but it'll keep him from stepping there and put his foot right there really yep how do you know that i've done it many times <laughs> <laughs> all right now if i looked here i bet you there's more but that that's enough like that little thing right there just enhanced that set like so much more you know it really like made a difference i'm telling you right now <laughs> okay catching a coyote in a trap is maybe even more exciting to me now that I'm older than shooting a big buck. I, I, that's just how I feel. When I walk up to a trap and there's a coyote in there, like my heart starts pounding and I get all excited like a little kid. It, it, it's just exciting to me. They're not an easy animal to catch. That's probably the biggest reason. You know what I mean? They're, it's it's something, It you know, it takes perseverance first of all. You know, you got, it, it, you set a trap, there's times I set a trap two weeks later, I still ain't caught nothing. You just don't give up. Instead of, you know, moving that trap, just move down a ways and set another one. Unless you want to totally leave that area, you know what I mean? But instead of pulling that trap, because you may eventually get something in it, I have. I've left them in there and went and set another set somewhere else and eventually caught one in the original set. You know, it's like a, almost like a game, you know what I mean? Like, you're trying to outsmart the coyote and a lot of times the coyote's smarter than you. <laughs> and when you finally catch them, it's like, it's just a thrill to me. If you walk into a place like this, you look for something that pops out at you, like, like catches your attention. Like uh, a, a clump of leaves or, you know, anything like that. Like up this edge here, let me show you. Okay, I'm looking up this edge. And I see between the higher corn stalks, there's that brown area. That would be a good spot to set a trap. If a coyote coming through there, he'll see those weeds also. And, and he'll hone in on those. He might come down there and sniff around thinking there might be a mouse in there or, you know, a rabbit or anything. Well, I don't think it's big enough for a rabbit, but that's, you know, that's how they hunt. So they'll go through this and, and they'll go from place to place where they might think they can find something. That's where you want to set. You got to have something that pops up. Here's another one. Now I can't tell from here, but you see that one brown or darker green clump on that hill? You see them tall golden rod? Yeah. Right in front of that, you see that one darker green spot? Uh -huh. Now I'd have to go up and check it out, but like that pops out at you. I've caught uh, three coyotes and a red fox here. In two years, I caught two coyotes out of this right here last year, and I caught a coyote and a red fox this year so far. But I want you to notice something that I showed you earlier. See the droppings? Yep. They were scattered all over in here, and I picked them up. I put a couple there, and I took a couple up to one of those sets on the hill because, you know, that'll help that set out. But. I expect before long to catch another coyote, maybe a fox, but more likely coyote out of this set. Like, I'm that confident in that set. I would dig this out, put my dirt hole right there, because any coyote come down through here, they're going to go over here, they might pee on it, they're going to sniff it. Probably other fox or coyotes have done the same. That's what you're looking for, something that just stands out there over here and this is like corn stubble but this is real like worn down like something's been walking here that's this is where that guy is probably going to walk when he comes through here they like to follow changes in in crops from grass to corn or from soybean to hay they like to follow the edges so the way i normally start out and first i want to say something that the, the scent thing, it wouldn't bother me to set this with bare hands. I like to wear the leather gloves. They work really well. But I, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Human scent is not a big issue. 
It, it just isn't. Like, yeah, maybe tonight a coyote comes through. He might smell a little strong human scent. He might go on his way. But, you know, uh, over a day or two, that scent starts to diminish. And it'll be there for a long time, but it doesn't spook them. And I try to go down, you know, as deep as I can within reason. So we're like, is that 10 inches? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you hit a rock and it's only six inches, it don't matter. I mean, it'll work. And I like to cut out a, a bowl about the shape of my trap. So then I figure out where I want my springs. And just levers. See that? Almost perfect. Now, you have your trap holding on your levers and on your jaws so you don't have any wobble. That's the, that's the important thing. If you can keep it from wobbling, you got half the battle won. You should always use different gloves. I always just put these blue gloves on. Now I used, I told you, I used that Rusty Johnson's Lucky on that last set. So this set I'll use the top dog. And this stuff actually kind of smells like dog food and musk. It's not like a putrid, you know, a putrid smelling stuff. Like some of these baits are really rank. But I'm just trying to, you know, that's, that's on the heavy side, but we'll do it anyways. Put that as far down in the hole as you can get it. And then, here's some coyote gland. Pour a little bit of that. And... We're going to try some of this 138. This is a little bit skunky smelling stuff, but it again, it's not like it's not like putrid. It's just faint. And all you need of that, because that's a lure, it's just a little dab like that. Just tuck that right there in that grass. And then, as if that weren't enough, I'll put a little bit of fox urine on this. Coyotes love fox urine. And that's it. All right. Well, folks, I'm going to have to take care of this one quickly. Calm down. 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 This was a one toed catch. And he was just about to pull that toe off, buddy. Wow, how close. If you can see this, he's barely caught by one toe. He was about to rip it off. So I hurried up and dispatched him before I got any good footage, but that's what she be.